What is up you guys, I hope you're doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes, welcome back to the Ed Like series. In this case, we're gonna analyze the profile from Jason Scottish. Now, Jason Scottish or Jay Scottish on Instagram is a landscape photographer. His profile is very aesthetic and it's very consistent throughout all his feed and all his photographs. So, you know how this works guys. We're gonna jump into Instagram, check out his style, see and analyze how he takes his photographs and the color gradient in particular. Then in Lightroom, we're gonna implement all those findings to create a base preset and see how it performs on a series of photos. So let's jump into Instagram first and analyze his style. Okay guys, so this is Jay Scottish on Instagram. As we can see, he lives in Seattle, Washington, and therefore he has that Pacific West Coast, really nice vibe in the nature photography that he shoots. Now, talking about how he shoots his photography, he shoots with a Canon R5, he's always shot with Canon, and he shoots with a 16 to 35, 2.8, to get that wide aspect, um, that wide shot, and put everything into the frame, and then he shoots with a 70 to 200 f 2.8, to get a lot of compression in those portraits. Now, he does shoot another kinds of style, well, this is his style, basically this is the epiphany of his style, very green, very lush, very moody, but he also takes some portraits with his 35 1.4, and as we can see, it's quite a contrast compared it to his Instagram feed, but still, this color is very nice as well. But this isn't the style that we're gonna replicate today, we're gonna analyze this one, and for starting off, we can see that everything is very green, guys. Here we can see this one, this one is shot with the 16 to 35, and here in this part of the image, in, under the waterfall, we don't have any vegetation. There's nothing really that should be green, but still this image looks very green. That's because he adds some green tones in the mid-tones and in the shadows of color grading part in Lightroom. Another thing that we can notice is that there's a lot of contrast between the sky and the subject. That's done in the tone curve and also in the basic corrections. And again, we have those faded out blacks. We lose a lot of information in the shadows by bringing the blacks down within the basic corrections. And then, well, in this one, we don't see too many, too much of the greens because they're in high contrast. But if we zoom into another image, let's say this one, we can see that the greens are quite desaturated and tending towards the emerald greens. So they're not towards the oranges and making them a lot more cold and a lot more vibe, vibey. Now, another thing that we can notice is that the sky isn't completely white. Now, this is an overcast day and the sky should be white or bluish. So in this case, it's a bit tinted towards the greenish or aqua tones. That's done also in the color grading part, in the highlights, in applying some tones in the highlights and a bit of saturation. Now again, here we can see the lush greens, very desaturated, but tending towards the emeralds. And also we have a bit of desaturation in the warmish tones, tending towards more towards the yellowish rather than the oranges in the woodish tones. So that's the thing that we can remember. And again, we can see those faded out blacks, losing a bit of information, having a bit more contrast. It kind of reminds me of Valentin Sienin's or Valdez style that we already analyzed. I'll link it up here in the cards if you want to check it out, which is very punchy, very contrasty, but he applies it to more tropical scenarios. This one is more to a very pine heavy vegetation. Now this one is shot with the 70 to 200, a telephoto lens. And how I know this guys is because of the background compression. So he's standing very far away from his subject that's why she's so small, but then the, the compression on the 200 millimeter, what it does is bring the background closer to the subject, making it bigger, making it more compressed. And that's why we can see these trees and the mountains completely ginormous, guys. Um, uh, the contrary to the 16 to 35, which is a wide angle lens, it pushes the background back and therefore everything looks a bit more small. With a telephoto, everything looks bigger. So this is a thing to remember. He likes to put a subject in the middle of his frame to emphasize the scale of the surroundings. Now, here we can see those greens desaturated. Those blues are turned towards the aquas. Here we can see it in the foggy background in the back of the mountain. They're more towards the aquas. That's done, again, we can do this in the HSL and also in the color grading part. We are gonna jump into camera calibration just a bit to emphasize a bit of the tones, but that's the general idea that we want to achieve. Now, his style is not completely moody and gray, guys. He also shoots in sunny days. And here we can see what he does with the sky. Now, the sky is desaturated a lot. Normally the sky would be very blue, very natural blue. And in this case it's desaturated and tending a bit towards the aquas. Again, now the greens, they're not towards the emeralds in this case, they're more towards the orangey or yellowish tones. So that's done with the temperature tab. It's very simple guys. We can alter the same piece that we're gonna do, just altering the temperature to adjust the scenario or the ambient lightning. lighting. This one, we can see how the mid tones, here we have shadows over here how they perform. You can see that's a little slight tint towards the aquas to make it a bit more cool. Then we have those greens 
these ones are hitting are being hit by the sun so they're a bit more lush and a bit more vibrant over here they tending towards more the desaturated and emerald greens and then the mid tones over here tending towards the greenish tones and then the highlights tending towards the aqua so that's something that we have to remember in order to achieve this style but again it's basically the same things guys we have those constants that we're looking for very contrasted this one is a banger and that contrast that we're looking for those desaturated blues those aquas in the midtones and those greens in the highlights and again those greens tending towards the emerald so that's what we want to look for guys when we're creating the preset and editing his style but remember that the preset that we're going to create is going to be in the edit like preset pack which will be linked down below the desktop and mobile version if you want to go check it out in those preset packs we have all the presets that we've done uh, in this series including Peter McKinnon's style, Alan Palander, Paolo Clavero, Monaris all of those uh, famous photographers that we've analyzed and broken down their style their presets that we create are going to be linked down below if you want to skip the editing part so let's jump into Lightroom and edit his style guys okay guys so once in Lightroom here we have some portraits in a very piney scenario some portraits of my dogs macro photography over here some landscape so i'm going to start with this one go to the develop tab so the first thing i want to do guys is go to basic corrections and achieve that contrasty look that he has so for that what we want to do is make the image a bit more flat but also we want to achieve that nice contrast by pulling down the black so the first thing i want to do remember that while balancing exposure and contrast we're not going to touch them those are the values that are altered depending on each image so those values and um, in the preset are not affected they're uh, basically at zero or at standard so the highlights, I'm going to pull them down just to achieve a bit more information in the highlights. Around the minus 25%, something like that, guys. Then the shadows, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to pull them up. So if we pull it all the way up, we can see how we have a lot more information in the image. We don't want to go too much. In this case, we're just going to go all the way down to the opposite of the highlights to a plus 25. Then the whites control the brightest parts of our image. So for example, this shiny part of the sky over here are going to be controlled by the whites and the darkest parts are going to be controlled by the blacks so the whites i'm going to pull them down to a minus 20 or something like that so they're not too apparent as you can see we don't want the image to be completely white yeah around like that and the blacks also i'm going to pull them down just to achieve that contrast and as we can see it's looking very contrasty guys but remember we're still going to go and edit the tone curve which will control the exposure or the general exposure of the image so Next up, texture, we don't want any texture guys. What we want is some clarity to make the image pop a little bit more. So in this case, it's gonna be a bit exaggerated, but in this case, we're not working with portraits. So it's gonna be okay guys, if we add a bit more contrast with the clarity, we're gonna go with a 20%. As you can see, everything pops up just a bit more with the clarity. Now the haze, well, the haze, we don't want to move it at all guys. Remember that his photos are in nature. So he basically leaves the haze and all the mist just like it is he doesn't want to alter the scenario that which in which he's shooting next vibrance and saturation in this case we're not going to touch them that will be touched in the hsl more individually we're going to desaturate and saturate each color so the general tabs we're not going to move them at all next in the tone curve what we're going to do is not alter the uh, general tone curve over here we're going to go to the, to the other one the point tone curve and we're going to create a point in the shadows point in the highlights and then we're going to pull them down to create this nice u shape which is a very underexposed shape over here and then i'm going to just pull up the blacks ever so slightly up not too much we don't want everything to be completely great we want them to be faded out but not too much just like that guys maybe a bit less in the shadows just like this and as we can see if we click on and off the tone curve we've corrected that contrast harsh contrast that we added to make it a bit more soft a bit more like Jake's Scottish exposure. With Wagner here, we can see all we've done. And it's looking quite nice, guys. Now we're going to jump into the color grading part. Okay, so first up, HSL. Now in HSL, we can control the hue, which will alter the colors. Then saturation, well, we can desaturate each color. And luminance, we can add some luminance to each color. So this edit is not going to be too hard, guys. Um, for in this case, reds and oranges, we're not going to touch them. That will depend on a specific scenarios when you want to alter someone's clothing or something like that, guys if you're shooting his type of photography and basically because oranges and reds will control the skin tone so in this case i'm not going to move them but i am going to move the yellows as we can see the yellows control some parts of the green because well the greens are created or composed of yellows as well so i'm going to move them up just a bit towards the greenish tones to a plus 25 something like that guys and then the greens we don't want them towards the yellowish tones we want them towards the emeralds as we've seen guys if we move them up to the positives as we can see everything turns towards that 
greenish emerald tones, not gonna go too much, maybe something around the 65% is quite nice. Now we have that very emerald like tones and the greens. Now the aquas, we don't want them towards the bluish tones, we want them more towards the greenish aquas mint tones and this basically will be applied when we're shooting the sky. It's going to alter the sky and also it's going to alter the background or the mountains which are way back in the scene. So I'm going to go to the negatives, not too much, something around the minus 15, yeah. In this case we're not seeing too much of a change because we don't have any aquas in the image but will be this will be represented in the landscape photographies that we're going to apply this preset to. Now the blues, remember that the blues in the sky were leaning towards the aquas and we're just going to go down just a bit to minus 10 or minus something like that, minus 10. And then the purples and magentas, we don't see them at all in his images, we're just going to leave them at zero because in saturation we're going to pull them down all the way down to minus 100. And then we're going to start desaturating individually each color, guys. Now the yellows, we're going to desaturate them just a bit. Remember that cabin that I showed you and also the leaves, the autumn leaves were quite desaturated. The yellows were there, but they were a bit desaturated. So I'm going to go all the way down, maybe to a minus 40, something like that. As you can see, in these parts of the image are quite desaturated, but still we have that yellowish tones. We're just taking a bit of the attention away from the yellows and they're not too poppy and not too bright. Then the greens, I'm just going to desaturate them just a bit. Remember that his greens are quite desaturated, not too much, maybe to a minus 12. Then the aquas again, we don't have any aquas right now present, but in this case I'm going to go to a minus 15 or something like that, something along those lines. Remember the skies were a bit desaturated and also the mountains in the back. And then the blues, quite desaturated, all the way down to a minus 30. And immediately with the blues we can see how the tint over in the dashboard of the car has disappeared. That bluish tint from the reflection of the light. But remember, we're still going to add some tones in the color grading to achieve uh, that bluish tone to that cold vibe that he has. So that's it for HSL. In this case, luminance, we're not going to touch it, just in case that we want to really highlight certain colors of certain objects in the frame. But in this case, we don't have anything that we want to highlight. This is going to be like a base preset. So we're going to move into color grading. Now in color grading, this is basically what split toning was if you're an OG Lightroom user. Now we have the middle tones in here. So first up, shadows guys. Now in shadows what we want to do is add a bit of a cool tone to make the image a lot more cool, a lot more looking like the Pacific West Coast with a moody, very moody day. So we can do it two ways. We can basically drag the point around this, the color wheel over here and the middle point will control the saturation. So in this case I'm going to go with an aqua tone or we can just basically type in the number of the hue over here and the saturation. So in this case I'm going to go with an aqua and then the saturation, I'm just going to go with an, an 8, no, don't want to go overboard. And as you can see, if we click this button on off, the little eye, you can see how the shadows have this coolish tone now. Now in mid-tones, remember that we had some greenish or aqua tones as well in the mountains and in the background of those landscapes. So in this case, I'm going to go with a color around the greenish tones. And again, the saturation, we don't want to go overboard, we don't want anything too stylized, so just a 5%. Click on and off what we've done and it's just reinforcing that greenish tone in the mid-tones, guys. It's very subtle, but it's there. Then the highlights, remember that the sky, again, had a little greenish tint to it. So in this case, we're gonna go again with a green tone, and yeah, maybe this one, and add a bit of saturation, not too much, remember, just 6%. And over here, we can see it. If we add a lot more saturation, we can see how these parts of the image tend towards that greenish tone. We don't want to go all the way into that, just a hint of saturation with 6%. And we can see what color grading has done. And it's just altering a bit of the greens, giving them that greenish emerald tone that we want, guys. Okay, now in detail, I don't want to sharpen the image. If you want to sharpen your image, if it wasn't correctly in focus, you want to sharpen it over here in post sharpening. In this case, we're, we're not going to use that. Neither I'm going to use vignetting, but in precise cases, he does use it to emphasize certain subjects which are centered in the frame. In this case, nothing is centered, so I'm not gonna add any vignette. We are gonna go down all the way down to camera calibration to emphasize a bit of the colors. Now the reds, I'm gonna move them up to a plus 12%. Now, basically what camera calibration does is alter the colors that come directly from the camera. So it's basically altering every single color in our image is composed of red, green, and, purple, and blue, guys. So all these combined are the RGB. So basically, if we alter the reds, we're altering every single color of the image but in larger proportion, we're altering the reds and the oranges. So I'm gonna go up to 12% and basically what I'm altering is the woodish tones or any color which is in that frame. 
making it a bit more towards the brick like colors and not towards the magenta so just going to bump it up just a bit then the green primary well controls the greens as well i'm going to pull them up just a bit again towards the emerald just to make emphasis on those emerald greens that we want to achieve and then the blue primary well we don't want the blues tending towards the magentas we want them tending towards the aqua so i'm going to go down to a negative not too much around the minus 10 percent we can click on and off the camera calibration to see what it's done and it's just a minor change guys but we can see it over here in the log and also in the greens turn it off turn it on it's very subtle guys but it just adds to this effect so this is the original image and the before and after and the changes are quite unique as you can see this one should and could be fitted into Jay Scottish uh, Instagram feed now the preset is already finished guys we're gonna save it so we're gonna go to the right panel over here click on the plus sign on presets create a preset I'm gonna name it Jason Scottish now remember white balancing contrast and exposure we don't want to check mark them basically because those are the values that we're gonna alter in each scenario so let's say we have this image and then we have another one which is shot inside the exposure is completely different guys so in that case we're just gonna alter the exposure and the contrast and the white balancing to match the situation with the preset so the preset in particular is just the style and then the exposure we're going to adjust it manually with two sliders it's very simple guys so i'm going to create it and now let's see how it performs on different scenarios okay so now we have this really bad image of a landscape guys but i think it works properly to see how it performs with a landscape like he shoots so in this case we're going to apply the preset i've already added to the like preset pack over here it's jason scottish we're going to click on it with wire our keyboard we can see the before and after and now we can see those aqua tones in the sky maybe in this case what i would do is just alter a bit of the exposure put it a bit down and here we can see those aqua desaturated tones in the sky it's quite nice and those bluish and purplish tones have disappeared giving way towards the aquas and greenish tones in the mid tones that we added that we saw in his style it's looking quite nice guys now in this case we do have some sun and remember if we want to make the image a bit more summery like he does just add a bit of the temperature to make it a bit more warm. Yeah, it's looking quite nice. Now, uh, now this image is far from finished, guys. I would go on to crop it correctly, of course. And also, I would remove with the masking tool all the, all this, this line over here and all the cables. But that's not the purpose of this photograph. I just wanted to show you how it performs in a landscape with a background, a bright, bright sunny sky. Okay, now I have this portrait of Kevin, my friend. Let's apply the preset. So it's looking quite nice guys immediately we can see how the emerald greens really start to pop up comparing to the original ones which were a lot more vibrant then we can see that nice contrast faded out blacks it's looking quite nice and overall it's looking very nice this image and quite cool now if you wanted to add a bit more contrast to, to this image just go to the contrast tab add a bit more contrast and also it's looking quite nice now one thing that we can notice is how the pine needles which were a bit more towards the reddish tones over here are tending towards more the oranges Remember the cabin shot that we saw on Jay Scottish profile? Well, the wood was tending not towards the reddish tones, more towards the oranges and yellows. So that's what we did over here. And that's down to what we altered in the camera calibration with the red primary. Now we have this macro shot over here of this little plant growing on a log. Let's see the preset. And it's looking quite dark. So how we do correct it? Just add a bit more exposure. In this case, maybe add a bit of vignette just to center a bit of the subject draw a bit more attention just a negative vignette and feather it just a bit looking quite nice now if you wanted to alter the greens to a bit more warmish tones maybe it's a bit too cold for your taste just move the temperature up just a bit until you're happy with those results so over here's the original just move it up just a bit to make it a bit more vibrant next i have a portrait of my dog arnold so let's apply the preset over here and immediately we can see those emerald greens really start to pop up it's quite nice very nice of course this image would need some retouching but that's not the purpose of this tutorial i already made one about advanced retouching tools in Lightroom. i'll link it up here in the cards if you want to go check it out but it's looking quite nice guys again if you wanted a bit more vibrant greens just move the temperature up just a bit or move it down if you want colder greens yeah it's looking quite nice so guys, that's my interpretation on Jay Scottish's style. Remember, I'm not trying to steal his style. That's not the purpose of these tutorials. The purpose of them is for you guys to learn how to analyze color grading and how to achieve certain looks within Lightroom so you can achieve a better understanding on what each slider does in Lightroom and therefore you can 
better your editing techniques, guys. So remember that the preset I've created, it's in the edit preset pack. Once again, it will be linked down below. If you can support me in that manner, I'd be very thankful. If not, guys, you can just like the video, share it with a friend or subscribe. That's another way you can support me. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Hope you're doing well. So remember to smile. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.